You know, Seda Hiro, who is alleged to have abducted Ose Oruro, has been arraigned at the Federal High Court in Yenagua, the Bayelsa state capital. Well, the suspect was arraigned for conspiring to commit abduction. The suspect had five counts, charges read against him, and he pleaded not guilty to all. Oh, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency has predicted low rainfall in many parts of the country this year. Given the 2016 seasonal rainfall forecast, the Director General of the agency, Mr. Anthony Onuforum, also warned of the danger of this for farmers and the, uh, and the farmers in the affected areas. Mr. Onuforum then stressed the need for interagency collaboration to manage the situation. It is the formal presentation of the 2016 seasonal rainfall prediction by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency. The Director General of the agency who presented the forecast says Nigeria will experience lower than normal rainfall in many parts of the country. Unusual weather and extreme climate phenomena are still very much with us. Our rainfall prediction this year indicates that the rainy season in Nigeria will be characterized this year by late onset early cessation lower than normal rain in many parts of the country, especially in the northernmost parts. Also, dry spells during the rainy season may be more frequent and severe in many parts of the north. He also warns about the possibility of isolated flash floods in flood-prone areas. It is necessary to state that the expected lower than normal rainfall in parts of the country does not rule out the possibility of isolated flash floods due to high intensity rainfall at the peak of the rainy season, especially in those places that are naturally prone to flooding. These are risk factors to farmers in the affected areas. The agency attributes the 2016 forecast on extreme weather conditions that the country has experienced in recent times. Meanwhile, the Minister of State for Aviation appeals to relevant agencies of government to take the 2016 seasonal rainfall forecast seriously. In 2012, NIMET released the prediction about the likelihood of flooding several months earlier. Unfortunately, however, adequate preparations were not made and the flood inflicted heavy devastation when it came later within the year. This year, NIMET's prediction has indicated the likelihood of delayed onset and less than normal rainfall in several parts of the country. We cannot afford to repeat the mistakes of the past by ignoring the early warning. Nigeria experienced one of its worst flooding in 2012 when 30 states of the Federation suffered from severe flooding, killing some 363 persons and displacing over 3 million people. A food crisis may just be looming in Benue State after farmers in rural communities of Logo local government area fled their homestead in fear of imminent invasion by Fulani herdsmen. Residents of farming communities cite previous unprovoked attacks in which people have been killed or injured and property destroyed by the rampaging cattle rearers. Our correspondent Charles Aruka followed the farmers and herdsmen's crisis in Logo and now reports. At the northeastern end of Benue State, the people are not waiting for the invaders. The sight of grass and water might prove too enticing for the herdsmen. I am standing at the edge of the river Katsinala, a tributary of the river Benue. The river itself provides water for the cattle and the area around the river banks also provides natural grazing land for their cattle. Inevitably, it brings them into conflict with the farmers themselves. In neighboring Logo local government area, the villages are deserted because the residents have fled in fear of imminent attacks. It appears the invading herdsmen have already left their mark on some of them. We were trying to take one of them to their palace where they set root, not knowing that some of them were there in the bush with arms ready for us. They just came out from the bush and then attacked us. Left behind are the paramount ruler of Logo, Zaki James Meme, and a handful of his subjects. This uh, settlement has deserted like this for about a week now. 
because of the attack of Fulani on our, our farms and our homes. When they came and they were, we are informed soldiers to come and uh, attack them. That is why we are here. We are not here to do anything because we don't have any power to face them. The site of a burnt orange plantation. The invaders are accused of brazenly pillaging the crops and farm produce. They choose to eat the crops on my farm rather than the grass that is grown in the bush. Because when the, the oranges here, when they, are, when they are on, they come and pluck them in bags and put on the back of their, their cows and go with them. And when my children protest, they say they have nothing to do with them because they have the guns and they, my children do not have guns. I'm standing here in the middle of these yam heaps and it's an indication that the cropping season is just around the corner. However, with the farmers having run for dear life from the rampaging herdsmen, it's an indication that a uh, food crisis is imminent here in the food basket of the nation unless something is done to protect the interests and the lives and property of the farmers. For Channels Television, Charles Eruka reporting from Tsuarev in Logo local government area. Tax issues have generated a lot of controversy in Lagos State for most residents and employers of labor. What the Lagos State government has done over the years is imposing multiple taxes. Now the state seems to be widening its tax net again by including domestic workers and artisans. How did this come about? Well, joining me to throw some light on this is the chairman of the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, the LIRS, Mr. Olu Folari. Uh, Ogunso, I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the News at 10 at this time. Thank First you. of all, most corporate organizations in Lagos are complaining about uh, the supposed multiple taxation. How is this being addressed at the moment? Well, uh, thank you, Gimba. Um, Nigeria runs a federal system of government, and each tier of government is expected to generate its own revenue, both at the federal, state, and local government levels. So they, in the real sense of it, there is, uh, this issue of multiplicity of taxes has been addressed severally by the Joint Tax Board, and uh, there is a law that actually clearly, state, that clearly states the taxes that are supposed to be collected by each tier of government. And then, when we talk about uh, multiplicity of taxes again, there are actually some taxes that are not taxed in the real sense of it. They are user charges. For instance, if somebody chooses to block the road to have a party on, a, uh, on, the, on the main road rather than using a hall, it, it, you cannot call that more multiplicity of taxes or ta uh, overtaxing people, but uh, you have to pay a user charge for it. So it is uh, in that wise that people think that uh, there is multiplicity of taxes. There are actually taxes, there are rates, and there are levies. You, you're making a lot of money in Lagos State already. And now you seem to include artisans and domestic workers. These are some of the lowest paid people in the society. Why do you suppose that you're taking this action? Well, uh, this is about engagement and inclusion. And the position of the law is that, in both in the constitution and the tax laws, is that every taxable adult must actually file a return of their income and pay their taxes to the government. And when we talk about artisans and uh, domestic workers, we, there is, the provision of the law is that uh, there, is an, there is a proviso there that anyone that earns less than 300000 per annum should pay ta minimum tax at 1%. Invariably, for anyone that earns uh, 300,000 in a year, they are expected to pay 3,000 naira as tax, and that translates to 250 naira per month. And if such people actually earn lower than that, then it means they only pay at that rate of 1%. People use a recharge card of 500, 1,000 per day, and then to just pay 250 naira minimum tax on 300,000 income, I feel it's not uh, bad. And then it's just uh, the position of the law. Everyone must actually comply by filing their returns and paying taxes to the coffers of government. How do you intend to tackle the issue of tax evasion in Lagos State? Great. Um, first, uh, first and foremost, what we are trying to do now is simplifying our processes 
For instance, uh, what we did today, the press conference we had today, has to do with introducing a new tax return form, which Hitato has been a six-page form. We feel that it's going by some and it's not user-friendly. So what we have done is to introduce just a two-page tax form, okay. whereby people can just uh, easily complete it. And then it even comes with a guide to completing it so that they can actually understand the import of what they are about to complete. We believe the simplification will bring about more voluntary compliance and will reduce the issue of tax evasion. And we also believe that uh, if we are, we are also introducing new payment platforms as well, whereby people can, usually, can easily pay their taxes through uh, using their ATM cards, MPay, and even paying taxes online. We believe if we provide all these value-added services, then people, the issue of tax evasion, unless those that have actually made up their mind not to actually comply with the tax laws. And for those that are not doing that, I have a not too good news for them. Because the Ministry of Justice, represented by the Attorney General and the Honorable uh, Commissioner for Justice, has actually told negotiations earlier today that the, the Ministry will be introducing rapid tax uh, tax uh, uh, reform actions? If, uh, no, it's a rapid tax uh, 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 unit whereby they can easily uh, uh, prosecute those that are not actually complying with the tax laws. Impressive. I want to thank you so much indeed for sharing your thoughts on uh, the vaccine issues of taxation in Lagos. We understand that 24 billion naira is being generated. Uh, we're going to be asking at some point, not at this forum, if that is sufficient to provide the kind of services that the people need. I want to thank you so much indeed, Mr. Olor, uh, Oluf Folari Ogunzol. Thank you, Gimba. Of course, the chairman of the Legal State Internal Revenue Service, the LIRS. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, has invited a former head of the civil service of the Federation, Steve Orosai, for questioning over allegations of corruption and obtaining money by false pretense. The former head of service was called in today from his Abuja residence almost eight months after a federal high court ordered his release. The EFCC has now filed two fresh charges against Mr. Oronzae at the Federal Capital Territory High Court. Time now for business news on the news at 10. I've been joined by a, a by Emana Ambrose Amawe. You first. First Bank. Welcome to Business News. The umbrella body of the major oil marketers companies in Nigeria, Moman, has elected the group chief executive officer of Forte Oil PLC, Mr. Akin Akim Femiwa, as new chairman. Mr. Akim Femiwa takes over from Mr. Wale Tinubu, the founding chairman of Moban, who promoted high standards and best practices within the industry. The election of the new chairman of the major oil marketers comes at a time in which the continuity of the association's active engagement with the federal government is very crucial for the downstream sector of the petroleum industry. Heading the most capitalized listed integrated energy company in Nigeria, Mr. Akim Femiwa's new position as Moman chairman will look to support the government's policies of ensuring compliance of industry operators in the effective distribution and marketing of petro, petro products in the development of new opportunities. In a statement released today, Mr. Akim Femiwa says the association's main focus is to continue close cooperation with all regulatory bodies to find lasting solutions to the problems faced in the downstream oil sector, positioning the sector as a driver towards national economic revival and development. Mr. Akim Femiwa is an experienced and seasoned international oil trader with special focus on oil and petrol products, futures, swaps and derivatives. And the Lagos State Government says women need to speed up action towards the theme for the 2016 International Women's Day pledge for parity.
Deputy Governor Mrs. Idayat Adebule gave this advice at a symposium organized by the Nigerian Stock Exchange in Lagos. She says all forms of violence against women must first be subdued in order to advance gender equality in the society. At this time in the social economic life of Nigeria as a sovereign state, this team, in consonant with the International Women's Day 2016 campaign team, Pledge for Parity, is a call to action for both men and women to take concrete step in fast tracking the movement towards parity, equal opportunities, and the elimination of all forms of violence against women as well as discrimination between men and women in all human and all. The journey has been tough and rough, and it's still a long way to go for the human race to achieve this much desired equality and equity. Investors gave stocks the cold shoulder at the local boards today, bringing an eight-day rally to an end. Market capitalization closed at less than nine trillion naira. Here's Bolaji Akinwali with details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Transaction volume on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange ended at 233.4 million shares, valued at 1.4 billion naira in 3,224 deals. The gains recorded in the previous session were reversed as the benchmark index dropped by more than half of a percentage, in this case by 0.53% to close at 25,755.01. The market's capitalization closed at 8.8 .8 trillion naira. Traders attribute this decline to a drop in the share price in large cap stock than go to cement. On the gainers chart, Awanda recorded the highest gain of 10.11%. It was followed by Tiger Brand with 9.52% and UBA at 8.13%. On the flip side, UCAP led with 4.76% loss. The MPF Microfinance Bank was next with a drop at 4.46% and then go to cement with 2.90%. Meanwhile, banking stocks continued the dominance on the activity chart led by FCMB, UBA and Zenith Bank. That's a wrap on the Stock Market Report. I am Bolaji Akinwali. Many thanks, Boladi. Well, the board of Computer Warehouse Group says it expects to incur a number of significant one-off charges that will contribute to an overall loss for the financial year ended December the 31st, 2015. In a statement signed by the chief financial officer of the company, Obianuju AJ, it expects to report an operational loss stemming from a combination of reduction in margins in its traditional reseller business, as well as inability to transfer increased cost of doing business to customers. The board also says it has taken steps to reposition the company for improved performance this year. Well, let's now take a look at how equity is fed at the global markets. And that's it on Business News tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Um, Emana Amawe, it's back to Gimba for the rest of the news at 10. You first. First Bank. Nigeria needs policies that will encourage local production and reduce importation to achieve a stronger economy. This is according to the Minister of Agriculture, Aldu Ogwe, who visited the Notore Chemicals Industries Limited in One. River State. This is his first official visit to Notori Chemicals Industries Limited in Onne in River State. The Minister of Agriculture and his team, management and staff of the company converge on the conference room of the fertilizer company. 
They are here to talk about the prospects and challenges faced by Notore in the production of fertilizer, as well as his achievements in the development of agriculture in the country. There's a genuine fear okay, regarding uh, uh, utilization of uh, certain types of fertilizers for making explosives. What we're trying to do now is to make sure that we can educate and use uh, material that's available to show that it's, there are different types of fertilizers, like specifically ammonium nitrate that is used for making bombs, not uh, urea, which is already in a stable form and is blended into a, a product that can be used for agriculture. We want the urea to get the fertilizer to get to farmers quickly. The rains are coming, and we don't want this factory to slow down or shut down. So we are very concerned. It's now time for a tour of the facility. The minister and his team are taking round the training centre, then the ammonia control room, where the gas manufacturing processes are measured and managed. The minister believes that encouraging local production is the way to go. We have to learn to produce at home, to support industries like, uh, like, like Notori, like uh, Indorama, and so on, because the penchant for importing and importing and importing is destroying us from toothpicks to turbines, from tomato paste to, to chalk, to pencils, to erasers. Everything is coming in from other places, and we are not selling anything to anyone else. I think the most important thing now is uh, to ensure that we continue to produce, you know, uh, the way we are. With plant is stabilized, we have on uh, restricted uh, supply of gas, so we've overcome that. We will now use the gas and the platform that we have to actually build a second plant. We'll start to look at that from sometime uh, th this year. We'll start to look at um, what we call uh, the early works that will allow us then move on to making building a second plant. The management of Notori says the company will continue to raise the standards in the provision of fertilizer, seeds and education on best farming practice to farmers in Nigeria and Africa. Emmanuel Iri, Channels Television News. And still ahead on the news at 10, Super Falcon striker Azizat Oshoala challenges FIFA on the development of women football in Africa at the FIFA conference in Zurich. That's on sports news. Stay with us.